The idea that water, plants, and sound are sympathetic to one another we hold to be self-evident. Still, the research methods of spiritual pop scientists like Masato Emoto are brought into question. As waveforms enter the skull through the ear, they are converted into neural stimulus in our brain, and our spirit evaluates this information according to our unique life path resonance. In this sense, Emoto's claim that water responds poorly to aggressive music seems to betray his own musical preference as bias during the interpretation, interpretation of data. We each have different customized aesthetic preferences. I want it to be black and silver like the color of music that was played to me in the womb, or perhaps a dark crimson red symphony like the smell of a full moon obscured by clouds, accompanied by the electric yellow that seems to emanate from the energetic field of plant life. Further along in our synchro-musical journey, we discover the field of psychoacoustics, defined as the study of subjective human perception of sounds. If you have ever learned the meaning of a new word, and suddenly discovered this word reoccurring several times that day, listeners relate to music in a similar way, according to aesthetic bias and proclivities to certain harmonic overtones. Research scientist Thomas Gold postulated that the ear emits sound as well as receiving it. This theory was proven to be true back in 1977, and from this we can gather that the musical experience cannot be limited to data contained on vinyl, tape, compact disc, or computer file, as the listener plays an active, unconscious role in the music itself. We register this subconsciously as the swirl of energy experienced at a well-attended live concert. These ear sounds that we emit are called autoacoustic emissions. Steganography is the art and science of writing hidden messages in such a way that no one apart from the sender and intended recipient suspects the existence of the message, a form of security through obscurity. If incorporated into a sound signal of a particular frequency and wavelength, one could embed a holographic image into a song that would be interpreted by the subconscious and not experienced directly. This could be used as a harmless novelty such as how Richard James of Aethex Twin fame embedded an image of his face into the song Window Liquor, but could also theoretically be used in mind control programs such as MK Ultra. Coupled with psychedelic drug experimentation, a few nefarious psychonauts could create Pavlovian cues that would send the mind reeling when a particular stimuli of their choosing was present. This phenomenon can be viewed in the films A Clockwork Orange, The Island, and Dark City, where images are displayed to subjects during REM sleep or hyperactivity, and repulsions and associations are then made within the cortex every, every time, time that signal is introduced in the future. One, your eyes in A Clockwork thinner. Orange, Alex is made to feel sick every time he hears Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, or when he exhibits any kind of violent behavior. In The Island, they are able to create an entire fake childhood, and in Dark City, extraterrestrials used a similar technology to wipe a person's memory clean, only to be replaced with a completely different set of memories. These types of textured sonic messages delivered directly to the brain can reach enormous amounts of people. Think of how magnified the effect would be if holophonic sound in IMAX theaters were used to relay such signals, which indeed they may be doing. It would be the ultimate in occult espionage, dwarfing even brilliant versions of message transfer such as writing in Morse code on knitting yarn and then sewing it into a piece of clothing, or nano-dot ink on the back of a stamp as an example. Curiously, in October of 2001, the New York Times published an article claiming that Al-Qaeda had used steganographic techniques to encode messages into images, and then transported these via email to prepare for and execute the September 11th attacks. As Al-Qaeda was not the primary governing hand in the attacks, we can infer that our self-proclaimed cosmic masters have been using this technology to puppet and parade humanity for quite some time, and even have the gusto to joke about it as seen in the Hulu Super Bowl commercial featuring Alec Baldwin as a mind-control hawking alien. Music triggers several categories of neurophysical healing processes. Nonverbal music moves from the brain's auditory cortex into the center of the limbic system, the area of the body that governs blood pressure, heartbeat, body temperature, and the creation of new neural pathways in the brain. Stored memories and imagined material are carried across the corpus callosum by music, bridging the left and right hemispheres and stimulating the body's immune system. Auditory stimulation excites peptides in the brain and stimulates the production of endorphins, or natural opiates, which produce feelings of euphoria, shift in moods, and emotional bliss. 
Remember the occult axiom, the function creates the organ. A computer's hardware and software programs depend upon one another for the beauty of intelligent design to be fully realized. Likewise, the study of psychoacoustics provides rational insights into the mysteries and how musical meditations can be carried out more successfully. For example, the auditory cortex of our brain is divided into three sections. The primary cortex is responsible for auditory hallucinations, and it can be electrically stimulated to induce major third-ear activation. It is rumored that the early 20th century Russian composer, Dmitry Shostakovich, had a piece of metal shrapnel lodged in this area of the temporal lobe, and he would harvest many of his orchestral melodies simply by tilting his head to one side, activating the primary auditory cortex. This is the closest that he came to a psychedelic musical equivalent to the pineal gland. By understanding the effects of binaural and isochronous tones, he induced intentional brain change and stimulated musical hallucinations. Sounds and images are arranged to generate different modes of consciousness and convey a series of messages. This is true in all forms of media, be it the commercial advertisements of big business or the philosophical explorations of small independent art projects. The intention of the creator is hidden, suspect, and cannot be taken at face value. What can be known first is an impression in the form of feelings and thoughts, which are then to be turned over, questioned, and discussed. The alchemical transmutation of thought forms is vital to our awakening. We are returning to a perception of reality, systematically detaching from all authoritarian constructs, reconnecting with the divine intelligence of organic information systems. Music has been known to all philosophers as a key to unlocking the inner potential, but before we enter a discussion of organized compositions, it must first be understood that the audiomancy is trumped by resistance. We are surrounded by a perpetual magic circle, protecting us from the malevolent intent of musical magi who aim to disturb and disorient our higher faculties. Active listening is a meditative discipline, and as all mystics know, one must eradicate fear to derive the deepest occult truths from their meditation. Cautiously open yourself to new musical energies at your own pace, and the secrets of the universe will be yours. The Pythagoreans held the hexad six to represent the creation of the world according to both the prophets of the ancient mysteries. It was called by the Pythagoreans the perfection of all parts. This number was particularly sacred to Orpheus and also to the fate Latius and the muse Thalia. It was called the form of all forms, the articulation of the universe and the marker of the soul. Among the Greeks, harmony and the soul were considered to be similar in nature because all souls are harmonic. The hexad is also a symbol of marriage because it is formed by the union of two triangles, one masculine and the other feminine. It is a measure of duration, of the passage of time, a penancia because health is considered an equilibrium. It is a symbol of balance and when expressed in music it is often seen to consist of contraries by harmony. Omni is sufficient because its parts are sufficient for totality. 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 6. Unweary because it contains the elements of immortality within itself. Human beings express this duality as well, this perfect union of a dual hemisphered organism. We encompass all light and all darkness in its entirety simultaneously. Whenever we hear the terms God and Lucifer, heaven and hell, we are simply acknowledging that these two archetypes are equal and ever present in our consciousness, converging at the third eye in a whirlwind of musical tones, an ancient mathematical equation constantly balancing and dancing with itself in the fractal reflection of spirit. Where new cosmic seeds are sown, where life and death occur simultaneously, and the unmoved mover experiences through us as we experience its creation, only to eventually let chaos and destruction reset existence to be reimagined again after the passing storm. We are the physical manifestation of balance and cycles. Cosmic mandalas in organic form of alternating seasons of time within each breath, and every heartbeat of song echoing through the hallways of always keeps the cogs and gears of time spinning into eternity.